Hey everybody, Jeremiah Clark with Lawrence Electronics. I'm out here in the shop today as a continuation of our Lawrence Live webinar series. This is the second in the series. And in support of our online initiative for Anglers Unite. Anglers Unite is a social media uh, campaign we're doing that actually helps or is to share stories, pictures, and videos. For those of you that can't get on the water, it's a way to keep morale up and keep the conversation around fishing going. For those of you that can get on the water, it's a way to kind of do your part for the angling community and let people know that yes, life will get back to normal, but there's still fishing out there and the fishing is exactly what we all live and are passionate for. So while we can't get on the water and actually go fish, today we're actually gonna do the next best thing in my opinion, which is talk about fishing and talk about fishing electronics. So today, we're actually in the second of our series. For those of you that tuned in last week, you caught Lucas Stewart talking about the ghost trolling motor. That was the first in our Lowrance Live webinar series. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Hook Reveal product line, its features and benefits, how it fits into Lowrance portfolio, some tips and tricks on how to use and some things that I find useful on the water, and then a little bit of troubleshooting. And towards the end, we'll hop into some live Q&A. One thing that I want you guys to do is we have product experts and Lowrance product team online right now answering questions. So any question that pops up throughout this, feel free to type it in the live chat and we'll have somebody get to it. If a question comes up a lot, and it's a common question or a question that we feel like we should go into more detail on, we'll tackle those at the end as a little bit more of a video Q&A type thing. So let's go ahead and hop right in to what is the hook reveal and how does the hook reveal fit into the Lowrance portfolio. Hook Reveal is our entry level product. It came out at the end of last year to replace the, the very wildly popular Hook 2 product line. Um, they look very similar, but there's a lot of feature differences that are uh, drastically improved on the Hook Reveal over the Hook 2. <clears throat> when I say Hook 2 Reveal is our entry level product, it is the product we have that sits, we have a good, better, best platform. So the Hook Reveal is good, the Elite TI is better, HDS is the best. And when Hook Reveal, I say it's entry level, it's entry level in price point, but not in its capabilities. This thing is a fully featured product at a very, very affordable price range. Uh, we have these everywhere from five inch, seven inch and nine inch screen sizes. So probably a screen size for every boat and every budget. Um, <clears throat> but one thing that we wanna go into and talk about is how does it fit in the overall portfolio? And we'll get into some of that with the feature set. Uh, you know, when I do this discussion live, when I'm talking about the benefits and the features of Hook Reveal, I always like to ask people to raise their hands, and I can't see your hands, but I ask people to raise their hands. If you can remember five years ago, when a seven inch fish finder was side scan, down scan, a great built-in chart and great sonar, cost 12 to $1,500. Now you can get the Hook Reveal seven inch side scan for like 500 bucks. And we have an ongoing rebate for, for this right now as part of our, um, I just forgot the rebate name. part of our catch a great deal promotion. Sorry about that guys. So let's jump right into the hook reveal, its features and benefits and how it's better or improved over the hook too and how it's gonna help you with your on the water fishing. So the main thing we have in hook reveal that we did not have the capability to do in hook two is a feature called fish reveal. Fish reveal, it was is such a powerful feature. We've had it in the elite series before, we've had it in the HDS series before but we've never actually been able to run it in the low end uh, series. So with this feature, it's so powerful in our view that we actually named the product after it, Fish Reveal and Hook Reveal. What Fish Reveal is, is it takes <clears throat> the high resolution picture like downscan you're used to having of structure, of rocks, of trees, of road beds, house foundations that you're used to having on downscan, and then overlaying that with the actual sonar images, the arches or the arcs from conventional sonar right on the same screen. So there are a couple complaints that we've had in the past and we wanted to address with this specific feature. The first complaint I always heard <clears throat> on downscan was people say, I love the picture like image. I love the ability to actually see what the bottom looks like, what the structure look like, what the trees look like, but I can't see fish. And that's because in downscan and in side scan, fish show up as tiny dots, small little dots. It's a really narrow cone angle front to back uh, basically, the, the same technology that gives us the high resolution scanning means that fish don't show up as big blobby arches anymore, which conversely, if you look at regular sonar, fish show up as big arches, but the detail of the bottom is not as high as it is on scanning sonar. So one thing we wanted to fix with, uh, with fish reveal was that complaint of, I love downscan, but I can't see fish. 
what people would always do with that and what we always recommended doing was running a split screen in the past where you could have sonar on one side and down scan on the other and then that way you got the best of both worlds which is great it's one way to look at it in certain scenarios I still do this if I'm drop shotting and I really want to track my bait and how the fish react I'll probably still do a split screen view like this but one thing you'll notice even on this seven inch reveal mounted on this Hobie kayak is that when I split screen I now effectively have basically like two four and a half inch screens not the best use of my screen real estate so if I combine the best of both worlds into a single view, now I have a full seven inch screen. I have the full detail of the bottom along with the fish arches. And people always ask me, is fish reveal the same as fish ID? Or is it the same as your other technology that you guys have had in the past overlay down scan? These are very different features. Fish ID is the sonar basically making a, a very educated attempt at a guess on what is below you and giving you a fish symbol a fish symbol with the depth or a beep. This is not that. This is actually taking the sonar arches as they're played in real time, stripping out all of the rest of the sonar picture away except for those big bait fish or the big target fish and putting them directly on top of your down scan. With fish reveal, another thing we did is we wanted to make sure that predator fish and bait fish were easy to distinguish. People always told us that they loved the bait fish clouds in down scan, and you can actually see a school of bait fish, but it was hard to pick out those predators within that school of bait fish. So we use a, a lot of logic and a lot of processing to pluck out just those larger arches and turn those into arches and leave everything else on down scan the way you've had it before. So <clears throat> the other thing is we've uh, had in the past is something called overlay down scan, where we actually take down scan and uh, traditional sonar and put them on the same screen. This is not that. Those are basically taking two full pictures of the same thing and overlaying them on top of each other. It was the right idea, but the implementation wasn't that great, which is why we were very excited when our engineers were able to, to give us fish reveal. So that's the first product. And again, I spent a lot of time on that actual feature, but again, we liked that, uh, that feature so much that we named the product line after it. Um, one thing you'll notice with Lowrance products, whether you look at the entry level or you look at all the way at the top, there are a few core technologies that we consider very important or core or key to our product line. And one of those that had always been on the Elite TI and HDS was Fish Reveal. And we tried and tried and tried to figure out how to get into the entry level. And Hook Reveal is the first time that uh, we've been able to do that. Um, the next thing that you'll see about these products is, <clears throat> depending on which model you buy, uh, there are versions that come, with, uh, that come with the split shot transducer, which is basically uh, the hook reveals version of an HDI. It's sonar and down scan in a single transducer. And then there's versions that come with a triple shot transducer, which is sonar, down scan, and side scan in the same transducer. I do get questions all the time that people ask, if I buy a split shot, can I upgrade to a triple shot transducer? And the answer is no, they're different hardware. Um, so really, when you're making that buying decision, it's important for you to decide if you want side scan or not. That's the only feature difference in this and its big brother, the triple shot. Uh, but that, that is uh, a, not an upgradable choice based on the, the, the hardware that we run in these. So within these, again, being entry level, doesn't mean that they're in any way constrained on the functionality we're giving you. So on this product being a split shot, we have built-in chart, we have built-in sonar, and built-in down scan. Um, and so with these, we have chirp sonar, the, the split shots and triple shot transducers uh, will run chirp sonar as well as 200 kilohertz. Um, there is an option, another thing that we've done in Hook Reveal for you deeper water anglers is giving you the ability with, uh, with some changes from Hook 2 to Hook Reveal to run different frequencies. So Hook Reveal transducers can only run 200 or high chirp on regular sonar. But we do have HDI options where you could actually run different frequencies. These are now capable of running 83 and 200. So either with a different transducer out of the box or with an adapter cable to an existing transducer, the Hook Reveal units can actually go a little bit deeper uh, than their hook to counterparts could. <clears throat> uh, when you look at downscan, again, downscan's built in, so like this one I'm talking about the split shot product. This is the split shot transducer. Again, it's a smaller version of our HDI transducer. Inside this transducer, we have a traditional sonar element and a single downscan bar. And if you guys will notice, the design of this is a little bit different than what we've had on other transducers. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to the installation part. But we, when we had a chance to rethink what is a transducer uh, design, how does it work, how does it mount, 
we wanted to come up with a transducer that could be used in any application. So as it stands, with the bracket out of the box, you can transom mount this. With a couple zip ties, you could mount this right to the bottom of your trolling motor. Um, it is a flat bottom, so if you have a thin fiberglass hole, you could actually even epoxy this inside the hole. Um, or in the application that I have here on my, my Hobie uh, Pro Angler, it actually mounts in their Lowrance ready plate just using the existing uh, hardware that comes with that. People ask me, what, is a, you know, what does a triple shot transducer look like? And here's one, this is actually mounted up to my Lowrance ready plate. Um, this isn't how the transducer comes, but this is how I had it in there for testing. But the transducer itself is that long, and this has conventional sonar, down scan, and side scan in it. So this is for the triple shot models. So again, a lot of functionality built in, even in the affordable product range. Um, we don't skimp on features, we don't skimp on anything else. There are things this product cannot do that its big brothers cannot do. It is a lowered power sonar than an HDS or an Elite TI. It is not a networking product. This product is purely standalone. If you want to mount a fish finder on, up by the trolling motor and only look at it there, if you want to mount a single graph on the console, this is the product for you. This is an amazing standalone product. It has no networking at all, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the installation. The other thing I want to talk about that we've drastically improved with uh, the, the hook reveal units over the hook two is the built-in embedded mapping. We have an amazing built-in map in this product that has almost 4,000 US inland lakes embedded right in it. Um, one of the common things that people always say is, you know, I'm buying an entry level unit, then I have to go out and I have to buy a couple hundred dollar map chip. With this product, for most lakes, there's nothing else to buy. You turn it on and you go fish. So here we've got, you know, this is Grand Lake in Oklahoma. This is uh, Bernice. You can see all the submerged house foundations. You can see the roadbed that comes through. You can see the river channels. Uh, really good uh, bathymetric contours, really great detail. All of that built right in. If the mapping built in is not good enough for you, <clears throat> we've added Genesis Live to this product as well. So again, talking about those pillars of technology that we like to build upon within Lowrance and get into all of our products as soon as we're technically capable, Genesis Live is a new addition to the Hook Reveal units. Genesis Live allows you just by putting in a blank SD card, there's no subscriptions, there's no uploads and downloads, there's nothing you have to jump through hoops. You put in a blank SD card, you turn the unit on, and it will record a map for you as you drive along. So as you go, you can actually generate new contour lines to overlay on top of your existing contour lines. And I don't have a good graphic to put up there since we're doing this kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit rustic in our, in our shop here. Uh, but if you go to Lawrence.com and you go to the Hook Reveal webpage, there is a great graphic that shows the difference of the built-in chart versus the Genesis Live. Genesis Live, we have the ability, again, built in, all you have to do is put a blank SD card in the side to, rec to make live maps. So if you go to a body of water that doesn't have a map and you want a map, all you have to do is drive around a few times and your map's created live on the fly. And that will create up to one half foot contours. Most people, when they rave about the best detailed mapping, it's one foot contours. This lake has one foot contours, it's great. Genesis Live, you can do half foot contours. If half foot contours are too much for you, within this menu settings, you can actually dial back and go to one foot contours or to five foot contours to clean that chart up if you want more of a navigation style chart. Most fishermen though, they want as many squiggly lines as they can get on the, on the screen. And that's what you're gonna get with the half foot contours. You're gonna see every break, every hump, every drop off, all in real time as it occurs. Um, another big change we've had in the hook reveal product lineup. So I said we have five, seven, and nine inch screen sizes. On, and within those, we have split shots and triple shots, so uh, HDI variants or uh, side scan variants. We also did re completely revamp our X models. So the X models in the past, uh, they had some limitations that they just couldn't do based on the hardware. They couldn't do a split screen. Uh, they couldn't do live mapping. And they didn't have an SD card slot, which meant if there was ever a reason to do an update, we couldn't offer one because there was no SD card slot. So now the X models have a built-in SD card slot. It doesn't mean they can run a chart. You can't go buy a Navionics card or a CMAP card and plug it in. But what it does mean is now that it has a chart card, you can plug that same blank chart card that we were talking about for this split shot model into an X model and make your own live mapping. So if you're not a big map guy and you don't want to invest in a product that has a built-in map or the ability to run a map, 
but you think you might like to add one in the future, if you fish a small city lake or a pond, if you're a kayak guy like I am, you go to a lot of places that aren't mapped, a map chip's not going to do you any good if it's not mapped. So with Genesis Live and the X model, you can make your own map as you go. X models also now have the ability to do split screens, which again, they previously don't, did not have the ability to do. We now have the memory and the horsepower to run side by side split screens, whether it's your chart and your sonar, your chart and your side scan. Uh, it just kind of depends on, again, which version of the uh, hook reveal product you end up settling with. <coughs> so that's kind of a quick intro run through of the actual um, quick intro run through of the actual product features. Uh, one thing that I do want to kind of dig into is, you know, we get a lot of questions for what are some tips and tricks? How do people set these up? How do I best optimize this for my day on the water? And the first thing I just, in kind of those, I just kind of want to do, and it's uh, just a quick basic run through. When you go to the home screen, what do I see? What do these buttons mean? How do I interact with them? So one thing we've done, and we do, we do across all of our product lines, but very specifically on this one, we've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this the easiest to use keypad product you can in the market. Um, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of products on the market that use a keypad are not intuitive, they're not straightforward. One thing that we've liked and found a lot from our touchscreen units that people really seem to gravitate to is the graphical home screen icons. It's very easy to tell what I'm asking the product to do based on the picture that the icon represents. So the question was, how do you take that and you make it work great for a touchscreen? It's or not for a touchscreen, for a keypad. It's really easy just to touch a button and it does what you want. So we've got some logic in here that actually, depending on where you're at in the menu, will actually snap to the nearest thing. And again, it's super easy to navigate. If you want to go to chart, you just highlight chart, press enter, you're on your chart page. Same with sonar, down scan. <clears throat> One thing that I do uh, want to talk about on the home screen here, and we'll come back to this top row here in a second, is split screens. Again, having uh, fish reveal, you can eliminate the need, in my view, unless you're drop shotting or vertically fishing, uh, for the use of sonar and down scan side by side because you can get them all in one combined view. But what I really like is a chart and my sonar side by side, or my chart and my fish reveal down scan side by side. I like to set up pages uh, that allow me to just fish when I'm on the water. As much as I play with these things on a daily basis, which is probably way too often and way too much, when I get on the water, I just kind of like to have it set up the way I like, and I just like to go fish. And so the way that I do that is with this, we have some pre-configured pages, right? The, the chart, sonar, down scan, those are static. Those are there at all times. But if you see in the bottom left, we have this thing called add a page. Now when I go here, I'm on my page generator. And again, everything's graphically icon based. I know when I'm pulling something in, what I'm pulling in. So if I wanted chart, sonar, and down scan, I can do that. If I want to change the layout of how that looks, and I want a big chart at the bottom, and down scan at the top, and sonar at the top, I can do that. I can do them all side by side by side. Basically, this is something you do in the garage, you do before you go on the water for the very first time, and you set it and forget it. Like this now, this will be on my home screen, and when I go to the home screen, it's there, it's ready for me to use. I don't have to tinker with this. So while we're all holed up in our garages, and we're thinking about fishing and we may not be able to get out and fish, whether it's a hook, an elite, or an HDS, this is the perfect time to figure out when I'm on the water, I want my screen to look like this. And then sit there and make those custom screens. That's one of the places where I think Lawrence makes this super easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this three-way split. I'm gonna save it, and now there you see my chart, my down scan, and my sonar. But when I go to my home page, graphically laid out exactly like I just did it, there is my split screen. If I decide that I'm tired of that or I want to edit it, all I have to do is tick Customize at the bottom. And then in these, you see a wrench, which means Edit, and you see an X, which means Delete. So if I really decide I don't ever need sight or down scan and sonar as a split screen, it's just taking up space on my screen, I'd use it for something else, I highlight the X, boom, it's gone. Now, when I'm done customizing, there's my home screen again. I can add a page again. I can go up to nine boxes on this screen. So by default, we have five of them filled you can add four, uh, and then you can fill it basically all the way to this. We don't scroll or anything like that. Again, the, the, one of the ideas behind this product is simple and easy to use. Uh, so we didn't want to make it really complex to know where to have to go find things. <laughs> the 
top of the home screen is all of the, the tools basically we have. So we have settings, we have waypoint routes and trails, we have info, info which is your daily trip, how far did I go, your sun moon calculator, those kind of things, and then your file storage if you need to get something on or off an SD card. If, uh, if you're out doing, uh, uh, if you're out fishing and you see a great screenshot and you want to capture it and you want to post that screenshot online with the hashtag Anglers Unite, take this, you, you save the screenshot to your SD card right here and then pop it into your computer and there you go. Now the rest of the world can see what you saw. <clears throat> so that's um, kind of the run through of the home screen. Again, it will vary a little bit depending on what you do. I say that I like to go on the water. Um, I like to configure all these before I actually get on the water. And one view I like, and I, I can't, this is, a, this is a split shot unit, but if I have a side scan unit, I can show you what I would do with that as well for those of you that are interested in the triple shot units, is I actually like to, in this place, we're going to substitute my down scan for side scan just to give the same feel. I actually like to put my side scan across the bottom. I like to put my down scan with fish reveal in the top right and my chart in the top left. This gives me everything I ever want to see when I'm on the water. The only time I would actually dial into a specific panel, again, if I were doing a specific type of uh, lure presentation and I really wanted to watch that on sonar, or if I wanted to see my chart a little bit bigger if I were running. So when I'm out in my kayak, I don't do a whole lot of running. I can, I can keep an eye on this little chart box when I'm pedaling at three miles an hour. But when I'm out in a bass boat or out you know, in a larger boat like that, you're driving at speed, you want a bigger chart. So I wouldn't use it for that. I'd go to my homepage and just go to full panel chart. But when I'm actually just out cruising and fishing, I like that three-way split. And again, this isn't something that I want to wait till I get on the water to set up. These are kind of things you can put the unit in simulator at your house, turn it on, find the view you want, set it, and just pick it when you're on the water next time. <clears throat> so another thing that people always ask me, and one thing that we really tried very hard with the Hook family and the Hook Reveal product, is to make it super easy to operate. Again, we have that intuitive home screen. It's all graphically based, makes it easy to navigate. But a question I get all the time is, how best do I tune my sonar? And I've been with Lowrance for 10 years now. I was 12 years before the, uh, working for Lowrance and actually selling and installing fish finders. So I've been in this game for a little bit now. And I'll say, even for me, in the vast majority of situations, I leave the unit in auto. Sounds hard to believe, right? We're always told you have to dial in your graph. You have to pick the right you know, uh, sensitivity and color line and all these for the types of fishing you do. If you're an experienced fish finder user, that's correct. You, know, you, you may want to dial some stuff in, but I would say for 95% of the people, myself included, our auto setting does it better than I could do it. Plus, if it's an auto, I don't have to constantly tinker with it every time I move to a new condition, a new depth. If I start fishing ledges versus fishing a flat, I don't have anything to tinker with. The unit tinkers for me. That said, Within auto, within the hook reveal, we have a lot of things. When you're in auto mode, the menu's really clean. There's nothing to get in your way. There's nothing to confuse you. Um, there are a few things you can do. You can go and you can uh, do a split screen. So if you wanted to do a split zoom or a, a flasher view, you can do that. Um, if you want to turn the A scope on so you can see real time sonar data, you can do that. Uh, the, the most common one in here that people play with is palette. I like number one and number 13, but I, palettes are very subjective. There is no right or wrong palette. It's whatever your eyes like or whatever the conditions are like for that day, whether it's sonar, side scan, down scan, what you like, I may not like. <clears throat> uh, and that's why we have so many choices is it's really all depending on um, how your eyes see the screen in the given conditions, uh, in, in, you know, maybe just the way that your eyes actually see color. Um, so for me personally, I like one in 13, uh, but there are scenarios and situations where I use the others. Um, so th that's an available one. We I do have Fish ID in here. Um, I personally never run Fish ID turned on. It works well enough. Usually what it's saying is a fish is a fish, but I fish long enough that I'm actually looking for these hooks, these arches, because I can not only tell the depth of something, but I can tell its relative size um, and its, um, its relative intensity too. So the, the more color in something, the thicker it, and the more, uh, more intense that return actually is. So it's actually a bigger fish versus a smaller fish. Uh, and also, when I'm trying to pick up fish right off the bottom, say when I'm looking at my chirp sonar here, I don't want that showing up as a fish dot. I want to see how far off the bottom that fish actually is. And then we also end up having their overlay down scan, which is the, pre the precursor to fish reveal that I was telling you about. <clears throat> um, 
If you're an advanced fish finder user, and again, I say, you know, for, for the vast majority of stuff, I recommend to leave an auto. If you're an advanced guy and you do want to get in in tune, don't worry, we haven't taken those features away from you. What we've done is we've actually have a mode called, there's auto mode, custom mode, and ice fishing mode. And in custom mode, you'll see when I put custom, now all of a sudden, the controls that you're used to as an advanced user appear. So you have your range, you have your frequency, you have your sensitivity, uh, and then your advanced mode, which will have things like color, uh, have uh, your ping speed, scroll speed, noise rejection, surface clarity, and color line in there. Uh, and then more options, which takes you back to where you can find your palettes and your splits. Another thing you notice in here is if you're in a mode and you've gone and you've played with something and you've just made the sonar picture terrible, not hard to do. That's why I recommend leaving an auto. And you can't figure out how to get this thing back to where it's supposed to be. Within every panel, if you're in custom mode, you'll see a button down here that says restore mode defaults. If you click that, you're back to the way that we set it and you're free to tinker again. So if you want to get in and you want to play around, do us a favor and remember the restore mode defaults button. Uh, it's, it's warming up, so it's not really ice fishing season, but these units are capable ice fishing products as well. You change to ice fishing mode, it actually speed, it, it shows the A-scope, uh, and it actually changes a few other settings in the background to make this thing a little bit more um, attuned to that type of fishing. But again, for most users, everyday use, I recommend auto. <coughs> So that's the sonar settings. Downscan settings, there, you know, again, we have similar things in here. When you're in auto mode, the, mode's the, the menu's very clear. Not a lot to look at, not a lot to change. You can go to more options, and you can turn fish reveal off if you wanted it. For some, you know, some guys are used to the downscan image without the, uh, the arches in there. And if you want that, all you have to do is go in here and toggle fish reveal off, and those arches will go away. You'll see as it starts to scroll through, now I'm getting sonar with, or getting down scan with no arches. Um, I personally find this a very powerful tool and I usually leave it on. Uh, in here you have range lines if you want to see how deep something is at a glance and you don't want to have to you know, try to look over here and go over here. So you can turn range lines on. And again, the palette. There is no right or wrong palette. This is whatever your eyes are used to. So I use different palettes on different days, probably when I'm in different moods. I like number one, I like number nine, and I like number six. Uh, and on a really bright sunny day, I like number 10, I like this gold. But again, it's personal preference. There is no right or wrong answer, it's just whatever you like. One very powerful uh, option we have in this menu is fish reveal options. So when I talk about changing palette, not only can I change the palette of the down scan, within the fish reveal options, I can actually change the palette of the fish as well. So if I want those fish to really pop out of there, I can change them to like that bright green. Or I can, you know, make it all kinds of different combinations that, depending on, again, your personal preference, look great, don't look great. I really like, um, if I'm fishing for fish, especially inside of a bait ball, I love going to this green palette with my blue background because it makes those fish arches just explode out of there to me. And then within here, you can also adjust your sensitivity and your color line. Again, I usually recommend leaving these in auto, but if you wanted to tweak and tune, if you wanted a cleaner screen, uh, less noise, less background noise, but also reduce some small targets, you can back the sensitivity down. You see as I back that down, only the largest uh, fish targets appear. If I crank it way up, you'll see I start to bring in every little bit of background noise. So I personally like to maybe auto plus or minus one or two, depending on what I'm trying to do at the time. Uh, but again, this is personal preference. This is how you want to view it. Uh, similar would go with side scan. You know, if we have side scan uh, enabled on this unit, you'd have the same palette choices, um, the same range lines, all those other things. Uh, but on this unit, we don't have it. You can also, again, with this one, you can go to custom mode. Again, if you're an advanced fish finder user. And here you can adjust, again, your ranges, your frequencies, your contrast. So you guys have heard me talk about sensitivity and, again, how big or small targets do I want to show up. Contrast is the scanning sonar equivalent, to, to overly simplify it, of sensitivity. So if I want to bring out more deep, you know, bring out some lesser uh, reflective objects, I can turn the contrast way up. If I think the screen looks too hot, too, too bright, I can turn the screen down. Again, you'll notice here I'm still in auto contrast mode, so I see A plus or minus 4. 
I'm still letting the unit actually do the decisions on what the main calculations are. I'm just saying I want your auto plus or minus mine. So I actually never take side scan or down scan off of auto, uh, but I do play with the contrast up and down just a little bit to get the picture dialed in the way that I want to see it. And again, advanced mode, you know, you have surface clarity. So surface clarity, I think of these two things. So surface clarity is if you wanted to clean up from the top down, that's surface clarity. You see how this top water column gets cleaner and cleaner? And I basically, I start filtering from the top down. Um, I usually actually leave mine low or off because while I may be picking up the debris in the, so usually what you have up top is the, especially when you have periods of heavy rain or heavy outflow in a, in a lake and a reservoir, is this is all the mud and turbulence and suspended matter in the water. If you drive over a spot, you'll be surprised how far down in the water column your prop wash actually goes, because you'll see this kind of cloud extend down in places you've driven or somebody else has driven. So if you wanted to tune some of that out, you can, and you can turn surface clarity, you know, medium or high. What I found though is I actually like it in low or maybe at the most medium if I'm in really turbulent water, because it allows me to see these smaller targets better and still see up at the top. So that's kind of like the last little setup trick. The only other thing I really want to talk about in here is a lot of people ask, well, there's two questions, and one I just popped up one that reminded me of it. So a lot of people, I'll hear people say, how do I access the set of data overlay? Again, these are things you want to tune in the garage. Uh, these aren't things you necessarily want to tune it while you're out on the water. But to find that and the ability to set that up is you just press the power button, press and release, not a press and hold and you'll get what we call system controls. And within system controls, we have standby, which basically puts the sonar and GPS asleep, but doesn't turn the unit off. So if you're, if you're fishing, if, you're, if you pull up to your favorite spot and you have this on your, on your console, and you don't want the transducer necessarily pinging, uh, but you don't necessarily want to have to wait for it to boot up when you get back to take off, you put it in standby. And it'll sit there, it, it, it's a low power mode, basically. And to come out of it, you just press a key press the power key. Uh, you have settings, which takes you back to this main settings menu, which is where you find all your stuff for your units, your chart, your sonar setup. You also have your uh, power off. You have your uh, screen brightness. Now, one little trick, <clears throat> people always ask me, why would I ever want to turn my screen brightness down? Basically, one little click right there saves about half an amp of battery current. So if you're a kayak fisherman like I am, and you go out and you, you're running on 10 amp hour batteries, you get towards the end of the day, those 10 amp hour batteries start to get a little tired. Um, so I actually turn my backlight down just a little bit uh, in order to actually give me longer run time. And it looks drastic probably on the camera, uh, but when you're out on the water on a bright sunny day, you really don't notice that first click that much. Uh, if you want it full bright, it's right there. If you're on a, if you're on a boat that's got, you know, a couple batteries on, on board and you're not worried about it, run it full bright all day long, you won't hurt a, a big boat size battery. But if you are kayak fishing, ice fishing, using this in a portable pack as a, as a flying kit, definitely look at the brightness if you're concerned about uh, battery consumption. Night mode basically just turns the brightness down. If you're out fishing at night, we invert the colors, turn the, turn the intensity down so it doesn't blow out your eyeballs at night. But the one that I actually was talking about when I came to this screen, so with data overlay, we actually have two toggles. This toggle just turns the overlay off altogether. So if you have a screen and you don't want anything on it, just turn the overlay off. You see how when I toggle that, this comes up, off, on. The next one is edit overlay. So this is how people say, how do I get my temp? Or how do I get my depth? Or how do I get my speed on this page? Our overlays are by page. They're not a, they're not a floating data bar that sits on top of everything. And the reason we do that is we interview a, a ton of anglers all the time and listen for feedback. And basically, everybody will give you a different answer on what they want on, and how they want it laid out. So we give you that flexibility and capability to do that. Adding it is super easy. Again, you press and release the power key. You go down to Edit Overlay, and you press Enter. And then you see up in the top corner, you have options. So I can add. So if I wanted to add my, say I want to add speed over ground to my sonar page, if I want to see how fast I'm trolling, if I'm trolling baits or if I'm, you know, just cruising along and I want to see how fast I'm actually going while I'm fishing, I add that nice and easy. Now I can actually also change, I can change the data, 
or I can configure. So if I wanted to, I'm getting a little older and uh, my eyesight's starting to go. My, my, my eye doctor said at 40 your eyesight will start to go on close up and I thought he was a joking when I was in my 20s and now that I'm in my 40s he's, he's dead on. So I can blow this up, make this a lot bigger. I can make it super crazy big if I wanted to. I usually run medium or small. I, did, I never run extra small because again, I'm 40. Um, and then you could even put a little bezel on it if you want it to pop out from the background and make it not transparent. And then you can even turn the caption on and off if you wanted to save some space. So that's one of the most common questions I get is how do I set up data overlays? What data overlays should I use? The most common are speed over ground, depth and temp. Those, that's, that's pretty much it. But that's how you do that. And then when you're done, you just hit save changes. And now every time I come to this page, I have the same overlays. I can also move them around the screen if I don't want them where they're at. I can put them anywhere on this screen that I want. So again, personal preference, but don't wait till you're on the water ready to fish. When you're ready to fish, you're ready to fish. This is a perfect time to get in the garage, climb up on the boat, uh, think about days you can get on the water and actually set your fish finder up the way that you want it. All right. So the next thing I want to kind of jump into um, was there a question? Did I have a question? Okay. So the next thing I want to jump into is, uh, again, we talk about how easy this product is to use. Uh, and, you know, we talked about that with the home screen and with the page selection and with everything being auto uh, for those that aren't expert tuners. The other thing I want to talk about, and this is kind of an, an interesting time to, to think about this, is how easy this is to install. Um, a lot of people aren't overly technical, technically savvy uh, in, in terms of installing electronics, um, in terms of, you know, the, the comfort level in doing this. And right now might not be the time, you may want to want a fish finder, you may be able to go fish in your local area, and you may not have the right fish finder on your boat, or you may want to upgrade and order one, but you can't necessarily find a local shop to install one. So one thing that's super great about the Hook Reveal family is it's easy to install. There are six total screws to bolt this thing to your boat, four in the bracket, and then two in the transducer bracket if you transom mount it. There are two cables. There's power and transducer. Super simple. Um, again, no networking on this product. So this is designed to be a standalone, easy to use, easy to operate, easy to install product. And so if we spin this guy around real quick, you can see right on the back, I have two connectors. I have my power, it's two wires, positive, negative. You can find hot positive, negative right underneath your dash. Most boats have a switch panel or a fuse block right there. And then the transducer. On most boats, installing the or pulling the transducer cable is the hardest part of the entire install. Um, on, on something like the Hobie, it's not too bad. There's a tons of videos online showing that. Um, but if you're trying to pull this through a, a bass boat or uh, you know a multi-species boat, a walleye boat, or any boat that has uh, solid gunnels and doesn't have access, like a, like a John boat or a, a you know a V-bottom aluminum, pulling the transducer cable is probably the hardest part of any install. My tip there is take a deep breath, get a fish tape, and get ready to scrape your arms up just a little bit because you are going to when you reach into a fiberglass hull. Um, but yeah, pulling that cable is probably the most difficult part of the install. Now, it's not the most um, messed up part of the install usually. So in all of the, the work that we do, we talk to a lot of customers. We have our con a customer service group uh, that fields phone calls all day long. They do a great job at it. But overwhelmingly, one thing that we come to when people say, my sonar doesn't look good, or my sonar looks great when I'm sitting still, but as soon as I move, the image goes to crap and I lose bottom lock. That is transducer installation. So while pulling the cable may be physically the hardest part of the install, getting the transducer mounted in the correct location is the most critical part of the install. Uh, and, and you know, there's a lot of tutorials online. We have info in our install manuals, but I could give you guys some basic, simple tips to kind of explain where and how transducers should go. And the one thing that I always like to lead this part of the conversation off with is sonar is phenomenal at shooting through water, right? You put a sonar transducer in good water flow, you will have a good bottom lock, you'll have good sonar. Uh, you know, whether you're sitting still, whether you're cruising at speed, um, what, what causes sonar to degrade and what causes sonar to not work as you move uh, is almost always cavitation or air bubbles coming underneath the face of the transducer. 
So when I say sonar's phenomenal at shooting through water, sonar's terrible at shooting through air. Um, it can do it, but it doesn't like to do it, and it can't do it for very far. So when you have any air bubbles coming along the bottom of that boat or to the face of that transducer, and those air bubbles get underneath the transducer itself, you will lose bottom lock, and you will say, man, I've got a bad sonar. Oftentimes, this comes down to one of two things. One, you've mounted the transducer behind something else on the hull that's giving, a tur giving turbulence, whether it's a, a chine, a strake, uh, your, built, your uh, live well inlet, you know, even something that small can cause a little turbulence. Turbulence and cavitation cause air bubbles. Air bubbles below the face of a transducer cause no sonar lock. So picking the right location on the transom itself is critical. Picking the right height of the transducer can also be critical. We've got a great video online on our on the Lawrence YouTube page, which if you guys haven't checked that out, you should. Uh, Lawrence YouTube, we have tons of tips and tricks on there. But if you're, if you're interested of the impact that having the transducer just an inch or two too high or too low can have, go search for a video we did on the Elite TI-2 uh, of it tracking at speed. Uh, with a, a, a good and a bad transducer install. We actually did that on a Triton bass boat. And with a bad transducer install, we were getting about 10 miles an hour before we lost bottom lock. When we moved the transducer up about an inch and a half, all of a sudden this thing could track almost to the full speed of the boat. Um, and really what you see in that video is we actually put a GoPro camera underwater with the transducer. And as we go, the transducer is just low enough that it actually forms a little air bubble underneath the face of the transducer. And again, sonar's phenomenal at shooting through water, terrible at shooting through air. So minor tweaks up and down, even on the bracket. If you guys look at the bracket these come with, they have about an inch and a half of adjustment up and down in that bracket. So if you find a spot that should have good water flow, it's not behind a chine, it's not behind a strake, it's not behind a row of rivets on an aluminum boat, it's not behind a water pickup, this spot should have good water flow. It, and you still have a bad sonar lock, experiment with that up and down just a little bit. I think you'll be very surprised on how actually that plays out. The other thing, the last thing really with installing a transducer correctly is making sure you have it level to the bottom of the water or the, the, the surface of the, the lake or the surface of the river, not level on the trailer in your driveway. Uh, if your transducer is pointing too far forward or too far back, you can get those cavitation bubbles. But also, you will not get full fish arches. I'm sure a lot of you have seen a sonar that instead of having a nice symmetrical arch, has like an arch like this, where you get part of the arch. Your transducer is tilted. So not only is it going to have an impact on how well you track bottom at speed, but it's going to have an impact on actually what you see as you're going. <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about is specific to hook reveal. These are push-in connectors. They're designed to fit with pressure and they're designed to fit very snugly and waterproofly. On the connector itself, we have an O-ring, which is the water seal. And then we have what's called a crush ring and then another crush ring. Those are there to hold it in place. Um, the, one of the more common things we hear or heard about in Hook 2, and we've, we've uh, continued with Hook Reveal in, in trying to spread this knowledge is, if, you, if your sonar is not working, if you get something that pops up on screen and says transducer not detected, sonar stopped, or if your unit just won't power on, the number one culprit, like 98% of the time, is this connector is not pushed in all the way. You have to push it in until the O-ring and both crush rings disappear into the housing. Give it a nice firm push, you're not going to hurt anything. Now that's plugged in all the way. If you Specifically with the transducer, if you do not have it plugged in, you'll get a pop-up message that says no transducer detected and give you some tips on how to fix that. Uh, if you, you can select ignore and it'll stop the sonar because there's no sonar to actually ping. Um, it, all you have to do to fix that is turn the unit off, push the transducer until both rings disappear, turn the unit back on, you're good to go. <clears throat> I got a comment that popped up on my computer to show you guys another sonar feature. Uh, real quick, so I'm going to shift gears back to that just a little bit before we move on. Um, one thing that's very, people that we've had on our products uh, since I've been selling or making Lowrance products that I found is a phenomenal feature is something called trackback. Um, so with trackback, what you can do is with our product, and a lot of people have imitated this but not duplicated it, is you can go back many, many, many panels of sonar history to see something. I wanted to see this school of bait fish. And I went back and I looked at it. 
So one thing I can do with trackback is I could actually put my cursor on that. I could drop a waypoint right on that and go back to it. Or if I'm in a split screen mode, it'll show my cursor in both locations. One thing that's unique about our trackback is we're still recording live sonar the whole time. You notice there's no dead space, no pauses, no gaps. It's all right there. Um, so th it's all right there. It's all, it's all ready to go. The other thing um, I think we already talked about, but I do want to remind you guys that maybe if you're not a hook reveal user and you're tuning into this, or maybe you've got a hook reveal and you've accidentally turned off fish reveal, is again, fish reveal is on by default, but it can be toggled on and off within the downscan page uh, just by toggling fish reveal on and off. <coughs> uh, I got another question coming in. So X, uh, trolling motor transducer compatibility. So these units, again, you probably saw when we were showing the, the back of it and the ease of install, have a small, unique plug. This isn't a plug we use on anything else in Lowrance. And there's a reason for that, is these transducers were uh, special built for the hook uh, reveal and the hook two family. And we do not, they will not work on other, other products. Uh, but you could take a transducer from an HDS or a TI or an older LCX install you could take a transducer from your uh, XI5 trolling motor, your X5 trolling motor, your, uh, your Lowrance Ghost trolling motor, anything you have that has an adapter, we make an adapter to go from this plug to a seven pin transducer or to a nine pin transducer. <coughs> Another question that just came up on my screen is what side scan range do I commonly run? For side scan, I usually don't, uh, there's two ways I, I look at side scan. Um, I typically look at side scan as a tool to use to find out where I should be fishing, not actually where I am fishing. Um, and that, that, there's one caveat to that, one exception to that, and I'll get to it here in a second. But to me, side scan is a powerful tool to see what's out beyond where I, where I should be fishing right now. And for that, I usually run uh, 60 to 100 feet, depending on what I'm doing. The other, um, scenario where I actually use side scan is if I'm fishing a bank and I'm looking to see if there are fish up against that bank. And in that scenario, I'll run a little closer, probably 40 to 60 feet. And in that one, I actually do use while I'm actively fishing. So that's the, that's, that's the basic tips and tricks in the quick install. At this point, I want to open it up for a quick live q and I think we've got about 10 minutes left that we have to go. Um, so if there are any questions that came up that we don't want to answer live that I haven't tackled, uh, anything I completely missed, I'll let, uh, I'll let the guys type it to me here in a second. And while we're waiting on that, I do want to say, uh, don't forget, and I cannot believe I forgot the name of this because it's part of my job, uh, but we do have the catch a, uh, catch a Great Deal promotion going on on the Hook Reveals right now. For details on that, go to Lowrance.com to see what you could save on uh, specific screen sizes. And right after this, our partners at Angler <clears throat> are running a, a, a webinar series themselves called Wishing I Was Fishing with host Shea Baker. Their first guest tonight is John Cruz, and he's going to talk about his experience with the ghost trolling motor. So right after this, head over to facebook.com backslash angler labs uh, for that live webinar as well. One question that just came up is, can you mount a triple shot on a trolling motor? We did not design the triple shot to mount to a trolling motor. Um, it's actually designed for transom mount only. However, there are um, aftermarket companies that have made very good mounts that do a great job mounting that transducer on there. Um, <clears throat> unlike the, uh, the split shots and even the little bullet we sell for the 4X, it does not have this flat top. These are designed to mount straight to a trolling motor or to a transom. With the triple shot, if you want to stick one on a trolling motor, you'll have to go buy a, a bracket. Give it just another minute to see if anything else pops up here. What can be mounted in hull? So when I say the flat, the bottom of the split shots are, uh, they're, they're, they're flat to be mounted to the inside of a hull. I want to say that with a little bit of a disclaimer. The regular sonar on a, on a regular uh, fiberglass bass boat uh, hull should shoot just, it will shoot through just fine. The 800 kilohertz probably won't make it through with a lot of detail. 455 on downscan will, uh, but you'll probably get about a 30% reduction in signal strength. So while you can epoxy an, H, uh, an HDI or a split shot inside a hole, 
Um, if you want the optimum downscan picture, it's not usually recommended. So can do. I don't know if I personally would do it. All right. Uh, I think with that, the, the, the questions seem to have wrapped up. Um, I, I want to thank all my online Lawrence team for answering questions as we go here. And I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to join us. I know that uh, we'd all rather be on the water and fishing, and sometimes that, uh, you know, circumstances don't allow for that. So thank you for letting me talk to you about my passion, which is also fishing and making fishing electronics. Thanks and have a good night.